Hi everyone, Omi from CodeLab here, and welcome back to the third video in our series on APIs. So this one we'll be discussing a little, a little bit more about how we actually mess with the data that we get back and that we receive from our API calls. So I'm going to actually start out with the exact same code that we were working with last time. So if you guys want to continue building off that code, you can also find this under the part two folder for the API section. Um, Everything is the same, except I did add a little console log statement. It can say anything that you want, but I'm gonna put it at the very bottom of my code. And there's a special reason for this. So I was talking earlier about these dot then and dot catch blocks where, you know, it's like, if I make a successful API call, then in this dot then block, I'm, I'm gonna execute this code. But if I make an unsuccessful call, it'll execute in this dot catch code. And that's all fine and dandy. But when I actually try to run this file, now that I have this console log down here, you're gonna notice that when I run this, the this should log out first, logs out first, which at first, at, at first glance is a bit unintuitive, right? Because we're used to this concept called synchronous programming. If you've never done web development or API request, you're used to synchronous development where what happens is you go line by line. So line three executes, four through 11, then line 13, not line 13 executes, then everything else executes. And the reason for that is because Axios is an asynchronous library. So because Axios makes API requests, the idea is that these API requests, they take time to come back. Like you guys saw on Insomnia, that thing took like 0.1, 0.2 seconds to come back. And that was for a very simple, small requests. Bigger and slower ones can be upwards of like one or two seconds. And that's a really long time when you're trying to do heavy computations in like big programs. So Axios makes itself into an, an, an asynchronous library because what that means is that the rest of the code beneath whatever your API call is will run while the API call is happening so that you can't get stuck on that API call and be forced to end up like just kind of like sitting there waiting. The rest of your program can continue to execute. Now that sounds convenient until you realize what if I need the data from the API to like print it out or like do some computations. Like, like if the rest of my code is reliant on that, that value is not going to get back in time by the time I get down because my code is asynchronous. And thus is the big problem of um, asynchronality that we've now arrived at. And this is kind of the hard thing that programmers in pretty much every single facet of web or API development in general have to grapple with, which is how should they work about solving and trying to fix these asynchronous, asynchronous issues because we can't just do straight synchronous programming with this. And so in JavaScript, there's two real big solutions to it. The first one is the dot then and dot catch block. So this thing right here, very straightforward. Um, if we have success, then call this function that takes in this response variable. So that response variable, again, Axios gives back to us. But if there is a mistake, then catch that mistake, catch that error variable that Axios gives to us, and then print it out. Essentially, we're saying run this function. And again, this is sort of like the weird JavaScript syntax where it's um, a little bit different because you're using functions, um, like almost like at like, as variables in a sense, because it's like, oh, catch this, catch this entire function, like, like capture the error message from Axios and then run like this entire function. But that's normally how we do things in JavaScript, putting these small little functions throughout various places. Now, the technical term for this stuff is callbacks, okay? Um, functions that are optionally called back whenever a specific action is triggered. And callback is literally just like they're called and say, and like we tell them and say, hey, the code has gone way beyond you at this point, but I'm gonna need you to execute now. So like we've already passed line 13 in terms of execution, but because we had success, now we gotta come back up and call back this dot then function and say, hey, I'm gonna need this function with this response to execute and print out this console log of response.data. Now, now another, th another thing that I quickly want to mention before I go into the second way of formatting, um, handling with asynchronous requests, is that I did add this little dot data right here in the console log. And you'll notice that not all, all of this big stuff printed out anymore. And that's because in JavaScript, if you want to access a specific field of, of a JavaScript object, all that you have to do is just do, do dot the name. So, so in, in the last video, there was like a ton of stuff that printed out. And one of the fields in that big JSON object, I called out specifically as being called data. So now I can just say response.data and I only get that field None of that other garbage that came with my request that I do not care about. And now my console log is much prettier, much more cleaner and easier to, to understand and parse. But this response.data, let's say that 
maybe I don't want it to be a big JSON object. Maybe I need it as a string. Now that might seem a little bit weird, but actually a lot of times in JavaScript, you'll need to convert your JSON objects between JSON and strings and back and forth and vice versa. And it's actually very simple thanks to some built-in stuff that JavaScript comes with now. So if I want to turn my JSON object into a string as a verb, I'm trying to stringify it, right? So I can say that my stringify variable is just json.stringify response.data. Now this JSON right here is a little thing that we need to bring in before we can turn our response into a string. But now I can stringify it and make my JSON object into a string. But let's say I have my string, but I need to turn it into a JSON object. You can actually go back and you can parse it out. Um, you can parse that string into a JSON object by going over piece by piece and building out that JSON object by literally calling json.parse. So very, some quite intuitive names and I can parse out that stringified thing. And then we can actually tell right here um, that if I attempt to print these things out now, I can actually just console log out stringified and then I can just console log out parsed and I can actually end up arriving at pretty much exactly what I was looking at before. So again, I have this parsed thing out here. It looks just like the JSON object from before, but now I have this stringified thing. It's just one big string. It still keeps the quotation marks inside of it. So it's all still very clean and neat. Now that's part one. So let's make a new file here and let's call it part two.js and let's hop into some more new concepts. So again, I'm gonna need Axios to make my Axios request. Um, there's nothing new about that stuff here. Uh, but this time I'm going to put my Axios request into a function and I'm gonna make it my get call. So I'm just gonna call it get call, you yeah? know? And um, I'm gonna put these side by side here for a second. So in part one before, um, when we called this, we said axios.get, right? And then we just said dot then and dot catch. But here we're going to actually, instead of doing dot then and dot catch and then trying to capture this response or this error variable right here, I'm just going to store that inside of a response variable. So no matter what happens, I'm gonna get response back. But again, remember this is asynchronous programming. So everything else beneath this will run immediately because there's no dot then or dot catch block. So how can I do something as soon as I get my response back? Well, the interesting thing about that is I'm gonna get something back called a promise. And I'm not gonna be able to work with this while I'm still waiting for my response variable to come back. And then that's just gonna mess up the rest of my code. So unless you have a very small block that you want to put directly into a dot then, um, you're gonna to need to use something called async await. So what that means is that this console log right here, if I say that I am in the function call right now, for example, what's gonna end up happening is that this will print out before this. And if I were to access this response variable, bad things would happen. I would get a promise back saying, hey, something's gonna come soon, but we don't have access to it right now. So you don't get anything. Um, you can just print out that you that there's a promise that something is coming. And like, that's not helpful. Same thing if I try to return response here, even worse, I'm gonna return a promise that says, hey, something's coming back soon. But like, who does that help, you know? Um, so let's say that I try to actually end up calling this function, you know, let response is equal to get call. Again, same thing's gonna happen. This issue is, has not been fixed. So we need to implement that async await thing that I was talking about. So now if I log response.data, and then I say that this should print out last, right now that would not hold true. And we would see a bunch of promises in our console. Go ahead and run it right now and see that for yourself. But it's actually very simple to do async await. Um, literally all that we have to do is put await in front of get call. So what that means is that we're, we are going to actually make our asynchronous program become synchronous, at least for this one function call. So when we call get call, instead of saying, oh, there's a big Axios get request, go on down to lines four and five. Um, we're actually going to stall our code and make it wait and say, do not run, run lines four and five until await returns back to you. There's one more piece. We have to say that get call is asynchronous and we do that with the async keyword. If we don't, await won't work because it won't know what to await. Here we're telling it await the entire function. So now this response that we get back, it will be safe and it will wait until this console log runs. So now I can actually go and run this exact thing right here and I can say node part two.js. And just like that, this should print out last, prints out last. Here in the function call is the very first thing to print out. And then now my response.data prints out second, just like it's supposed to. 
with this big block, the exact same one that we were seeing before. Now, your next thought is probably, okay, when should I use which of those? And honestly, it's pretty interchangeable. They do function similarly. The one big difference is that with .then and .catch blocks, if you have code that's reliant on your API call, all of it has to go into a big .then block or a big .catch block, and then it looks very, very ugly. So the way that we can kind of get around having to work with those ugly callbacks is that unless you have a very small or specific set of code that needs to run after an API call, otherwise you should probably be using async await. Um, and again, cause like you could have like one line that's reliant on your code or sorry, like on your API call, API call coming back, but you can't just throw that into, into the then because you might not want other code to run until that response has been received and that variable is set. So that means that like all of your code has to go and in, go into like a big dot then or dot catch block. And then that gets kind of ugly. So unless you have a very small block like that, typically we just like to use async await because it does make for prettier looking code. You do sometimes have to abstract things like your, your Axios get request into separate functions like this. But at the end of the day, per, parameterizing code into functions is a pretty good practice anyways. It's very commonly used throughout the industry. It makes your code cleaner and neater to, to read and to wait in async are just a little bit more solidified and easy to use in this manner. So that's all for this video. Hopefully you all found it pretty interesting and I will catch you all in the next one. Thank you.